Hi, it's Mike with TopDaddies.com, and today we're at Universal Studios Hollywood with uh, Tshaka Armstrong, and uh, Tshaka's from uh, DigitalShepherds.com. Yep. Well, thank you for uh, meeting with me. Pleasure. Thank you for having me out. So tell me, what is uh, Digital Shepherds? Well, we are a, an internet safety digital literacy uh, organization, a nonprofit, and we go out to schools, we go to churches, we've worked with the Los Angeles Public Library System, and we teach digital literacy and internet safety to parents, uh, students, educators, uh, basically anybody who needs the information. So why is it important? Why is digital liter literacy important? It's important because for many of us raising children, uh, we didn't touch a computer or learn anything about computers till we took a typing class in high school. And, and so what our children are dealing with on the internet is very different from what we dealt with and the experiences that that enables uh, many parents just haven't been prepared for. So getting out there and teaching parents about what's really out there, what their children are facing, what their children are coming up against in this digital age is just such an important, we see in the news all the time, uh, issues with sexting, uh, with cyberbullying, and so we just really work with parents to get them equipped so they're not afraid, because a lot of parents feel overwhelmed like they can't control the technology in their homes anymore. So so what is the biggest issue right now that, you're, that's being, that parents are facing? Um, just lack of knowledge. You know, they feel like, I don't know what my kid is doing online. I don't know what my child is doing online. So a lot of parents, uh, they're, they're not parenting in some regard because they do feel overwhelmed. And so I have parents who will say to me, Shaka, I can't get my sons or my daughter or whoever to stop playing video games. And I'm like, you stop them from playing video games. You're the parent. You can't actually say, hey, you can't play. But, but because so many of these things have crept into our homes and sometimes I think parents feel that they have to allow their children to have these things because maybe the kids don't play outside as much as they used to when, they were, when the parents were growing up, but there's a little bit of entitlement. And so we really just work with parents honestly on a lot of things that are just common sense. My own children, when they were younger, they would play video games and I saw that it was messing with their grades in elementary. So then I said, you know what, you can't play video games till six o'clock. But then I saw they were rushing through their homework and the grades still weren't where I felt they should be. So then I said, you know what? No video games Monday through Thursday. You can only play video games Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Grades are fine. And so it's really common sense, practical parenting tips. And then we go in and say, here's some parental control software. Here's the right phone to buy, the right tablet that will allow you to monitor. Because children should be monitored when they're younger on the internet. So what, where's the balance between control and uh, being a parent? Because a lot of parents uh, might fear that they're being a little bit too controlling. Well, the rule in our home is uh, you get all the privacy you want when you're paying rent. Up until a child is 18, if they do something, if something happens, you're responsible as the adult. So it is your responsibility as a parent to, to be engaged in, and if they give you reason to actually be nosy and get in their business, because that's what we're, we're mentors. We're supposed to know what's going on. But as they get older, as they prove that they make responsible decisions, responsible choices, then you back things off and give them the, the room that they deserve as they earn it. And how's that working? So you've got two kids right now. How's that working with your kids? Well, I have three. three. I know we just oh, three. Met, so he saw oh, two. Oh, I only saw two. <laughs> she's 19. She's off now. Okay. She's doing things. So uh, yeah. what I did with my children. So she's whenever... paying her own rent and she can do whatever she wants. No, not no? yet. <laughs> no. I wish, but not yet. So wh what we did with our children, we started this when they were very young. So when my children were very young, the first thing I said to them was um, around the time we were going to give them smartphones, I said, you have two choices. You can have a smartphone, uh, um, and it's going to do all these great things, but I'm going to put software on it that's going to allow me to see every message, every text message, every picture message, everything that goes to this phone, and I'm really only going to do a lot of looking if you give me reason to. Or you can have a dumb phone. You can have the little flip phone, and that's yours. It won't do all the stuff the other phone can do, but it's your choice. So we made it normative behavior. Mm. Uh, and I mean, honestly, that's not a real choice. The kid is going to want the smartphone. But at that point, they've chosen to have the smartphone. They've chosen to have it knowing you're going to look at things. So starting from there, it's important that you make oversight normative. And uh, just like when we were growing up, our parents had rules and we had to follow those rules. And they started them when we were very young. Go, come in by the time the street lights come on. You know, uh, if you're going to be out, you know, we had neighborhoods where 
parents looked out for other kids and there were certain expectations that kids grew up with and as parents in the digital age we have to establish a new set of expectations and uh, you know you're not going to be on the games 32 hours you know a day they're not going to you know so we just have to really establish strong boundaries in, in this digital age so as your kids are getting older, do you, are you finding any transformative, uh, maybe not transformative behavior, but any changes in terms of the rules uh, or uh, their, their respect for those rules? Yeah, you know, the interesting thing is my daughter is current, she's 19, my oldest son is 17. They're only two years apart. But even in the rules I've had in my house for how we consume media, between the two of them have completely changed. Because with my daughter, when we were first getting into music and she was wanting to put music on her phone uh, to listen to, we had rules. You know, you're not allowed to listen to music that has uh, drug messages. You're not allowed to listen to music that calls women out of their name. I don't believe in that. Um, a lot of cussing. You're not allowed to have that. This was when she was in junior high. So we'd list, sit down, listen to her music, and we'd actually talk about the media messages in the music. Uh, so as she's putting music on there, no, you can't have this one and this as well. With my sons, it was totally different, and I had to refigure things out because they don't buy music anymore. They stream it all. Mm. It's all about, you know, uh, Pandora and radio. So now I had to come up with a method to get them back in control in terms of what media they're bombarding their brains with. And so I had to figure out new rules to help them deal with that. Mm. So there, it, it, technology changes so incredibly quick that, you know, you really take some thought and some, some time. So there's a big importance in keeping up on the technology as a parent then? Yeah, at least in a general sense. Like, you may not know what a transport protocol and what, you know, all these different uh, technologies are in terms of what the actual media is, but it's good to know that your kids may not be buying music off iTunes, but they're streaming it. Because a lot of the stuff they're streaming, a lot of these streaming channels uh, don't do um, radio-friendly versions of the songs. Right. So you get what's on the album, so it's rated all. You yeah. know, it's... it's filled with cuss words and different things that depending on how old your children are, you may not want them listening to. What I like what you said is is uh, it just struck me that you're really being an involved parent. Mm -hmm. It's not really a controlling parent because you're in, you're asking them questions and you're talking to them about the music that they're streaming and you're, you're actually you know participating in, in, in what they're doing as opposed yeah. to just, no, you can't have it. You don't even know what it is. You, you know, right. You're actually finding out what it is. And I think that's a big difference between being controlling and actually parenting. And children are going to see it either way regardless. Yeah. But if you're involved with them, you know, I've always told my children, look, I'm not going to set up a rule in our home that I'm not going to enable you to follow. So I'm not going to say, don't do that, and it's impossibly difficult to do it. I'm going to help you. We're going to walk together and, and walk together and, and make sure you're able to meet that. And, I, you know, I, you're still going to get pushed back, especially as they become teens and they're trying to individuate. But... All, all in all, it's, it's been a pretty, uh, pretty good balance in our home, I think. So one last question for you. Uh, if you were to define what it means to be a top dad, what would that be? Falling down and getting back up. Because I think as dads, we want to be our children's and our wives' superhero. And we mess up. We make mistakes. We're human. And, um, but we can't let that stop us. You know, we're going to go through periods in life where we feel like maybe we didn't meet up to a certain expectation we set for ourselves that maybe we didn't uh, fulfill something we wanted to do for our family, but we don't have the time to wallow in self-pity and, oh my God, I didn't, you know, we really have to keep moving forward and making sure that, you know, our homes are healthy and sound and, and pl great places to raise productive human beings. That's some great advice, uh, Chaka. Well, Chaka, it was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you, uh, pleasure. For more information, uh, where can they go? Where can people go? Uh, you can look us up on digitalshepherds.com. Uh, that's S H E P H E R D S dot com. Also, I uh, write a lot of my tech articles on Tashaka Talks Tech dot com. Perfect. Um, and you can find me on Twitter at Tashaka Armstrong. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. So make sure to follow uh, Tashaka. And uh, for uh, more interviews, product reviews, giveaways, and all that stuff, check out topdaddies dot com. And uh, make sure to also follow us on uh, Twitter and Facebook. Until next time. Again.